Is the Worker Phoenix 2.0 tournament ready out of the box? Sometimes the unexpected can be the best surprises. I honestly didn't have high hopes for this blaster. It's a three-stage small flywheel blaster. It felt like a fun setup for a regular game, but no way it'd be usable for competitive. But it's important to give everything a fair chance, so I got to testing. And when it comes to FPS, this is a solid range for the King of the Hill competitive rule set, sitting around the mid 150s with both AF pros and worker AGs. If you're playing in a higher FPS cap event, you're gonna be lacking a little bit of power compared to other options. Where I was really surprised though were the groupings. At 40 feet, they looked great. And even out at 75 feet, they were better than I expected for this kind of setup. Most of the times as a flywheeler at this FPS, you're going to be focusing on the shorter range shots anyways. So the spread at 75 feet isn't the worst thing. The build quality is solid. It's injection molded and the plastic doesn't feel thin. So I don't think there's concerns over durability during heavy use. I also didn't experience any jams, which I thought might be an issue I'd encounter. So that's a plus. Now I can't speak to the long-term quality of the motors and wheels in this blaster, so keep that in mind. It doesn't have the absolute snappiest spin up time either, but it's within an acceptable range for me. There are some nice ideas on this blaster that I think could use a little more refining if we happen to see a 3.0 version. Like the foregrip is easily removable if you don't want to use it, which I really like, but due to the location of the button to remove it, I've accidentally pulled it off during games before. Also, if you remove the foregrip, it's not totally smooth or a flush surface, so it's not the most comfortable to hold if removed. They did at least bulk up the spot in front of the trigger guard as an option for your offhand if you do remove the foregrip, which is a plus. And the stock is removable, but it's not a standard adapter, so your options for the stocks are the stock it comes with or no stock, which seems like a little bit of a waste to me. At least it has adjustable length as a consolation. Some plain disappointing things on this blaster would be that the mag release isn't ambidextrous and can be awkward to use if you're shooting left-handed, which if you're playing competitively, you should be switching shooting hands often depending on the situation. So that mag release being awkward in use is relevant here. The blaster is also full auto only. You need a separate kit to make it select fire. So even if the rate of fire on this blaster isn't insane, it's still easy to fire off more darts than you intended to. This can be an issue in game types where dart management is important. You can lower the rate of fire through the knob on the front of the blaster, but I wouldn't advise this as all this does is slow the pusher, making the time between trigger pull and dart firing longer than necessary. This blaster also uses angled talons, which may not be an issue for some if you've already invested in them, but if you've got a collection of regular talons, you'll need to factor that into the cost. But more importantly here is whether you being on angled talons will be an issue for your team if you ever need to hand off a mag to a teammate mid-match. You also have less capacity options with angled mags, where with regular talons, you've got a decent variety to choose from. Despite the fact this is a mag and grip blaster, it's not the worst grip I've used, though I do have somewhat larger hands, so that may not be the case for everyone. When I said the unexpected can be the best surprises, this definitely fits that description. Despite its limiting factors, I was pleasantly surprised here. And while the Phoenix 2.0 has fewer events I'd recommend it for, and more boxes that need to be checked before buying, I do think it's tournament ready out of the box. 